welcome back to my channel my name is Vera and in today's video I'm setting up my bullet journal spreads for the month of April. This month's theme is a jungle theme and it is inspired by my September 2020 theme where I used similar watercolors to create stunning leaves all over my page. As always though, before we get started, here's a quick flip through of my March spreads. While I did originally love this theme, I think that having looked at it every single day for over a month, I've gotten so sick of it. Whoops. And on top of that, it's the same exact painting every single week. I just, I'm over it. This month, I'm going with a cover page that takes up two whole pages of my bullet journal. Why? because I felt like it. There's no real reason. There's no real reason behind any cover page. Why do we really need a cover page in the first place? I don't know. It looks pretty, it feels nice, and it's always a great way to start off the month. I'm using a dark green calligraph pen from Archer and Olive, <coughs> Covera 10 for 10% off, <coughs> to write out my month in big letters across the middle section of the page. By the way, my capital letters modern calligraphy video is in the works. Sorry for the wait. I felt that the word April by itself could be a bit boring, um, it's literally five letters in the middle of a page. So I decided to include 2023 underneath in a lighter shade of green. And for that, I'm using the Pentel brush sign pen in green. Don't ask me to choose between my favorite brand of fine brush markers. I can't choose, okay? Technically, Archer and Olive has a really nice selection of more unique colors and then Pentel is more basic colors, but I wouldn't say basic either because they're vibrant, okay? So both of them are really good. I reckon the same price range. Honestly, you can't go wrong with either of them. For this month though, I am using watercolors from Windsor & Newton. In September of 2020, I used cheap watercolors and they're the same ones that I used in my 2023 setup. I can tell you now that there is merit to investing in higher quality watercolors. For example, my old ones, when they dry, they feel a bit chalky and tend to transfer on the next page, whereas my Windsor & Newton ones don't. The specific colors I'm using are from the Coral series, which should be of absolutely no surprise to anyone since I am obsessed with the ocean. I'm going to be using three shades, green, blue, and yellow, and I'm going to mix them together to achieve the colors of my leaves on the page. I've also got an example of similar leaf patterns I designed in my watercolor journal on the side for some more inspiration. The only difference between those ones and the ones from September 2020 are that these ones don't touch each other. It's kind of similar to my 2023 bullet journal setup where I tried to get the leaves all to be like separate and lots of white spaces. Whereas this time I'm actually going to interweave the leaves on the page so it kind of has a really cool jungle effect. <laughs> To start my leaves, I'm going to start painting the stem about two centimeters away from the edge. Now, if you want to copy this theme, a forewarning is that I'm going to be using Dutch doors. So technically you should start even further away from the edge because I personally only decided I was going to go the Dutch door route after painting my cover page. So the spacing later on in the video is a little bit off, but you know, at least you don't have to make the same mistake I did. I start by painting about a five centimeter stem that ends in a single long leaf. And then by dipping my my paintbrush in different shades of green, I alternate the color of the leaves that connect back to the main stem. I think it's really cool because it kind of reflects the lighting that you would have in real life. For example, if your leaf is partly in the shade, part of it's going to be darker, and if some of it's in the sun, then it's going to be lighter. And you know, on different days, leaves tend to reflect different colors. So I thought that was kind of the vibe I was going for. To paint each leaf, I'm going to start with a very light hand and then push the brush down so the bristles fan out. Then I do a little bit of a jiggle side to side to create a rustled leaf effect and then slowly release the pressure and lift the brush up, creating a fine tip once more. The leaves start smaller at the end, get longer in the middle and then smaller once more at the base of the stem because I'm kind of creating this nice little, what would you call it? An eyeball effect, <laughs> you know, not a teardrop. I'm going to call it an eyeball effect. It's not even an eyeball, it's an eye effect. I start each stem about the same width apart and for this one I'm just kind of looking randomly. I'd say they're about 2.5 to 3 centimeters apart. The goal is for the leaves in the middle of each stem to touch the leaves of the branch next to it, creating a beautiful overlapping effect that is really stunning to see emerge on the page and it'll look even more amazing when we get to the end of this video. But stick around, stick around, don't skip ahead. For my cover page, although ultimately it turns out really nice, I originally started painting with no idea of how it would turn out. I thought maybe I'd encircle the word April with leaves or maybe I'd do just the left part and then just the right side but I ended up going for branches that slowly disappear off the page. 
Now you can tell me in the comments what you think of this idea. Should I have gone a full circle around the word April or is my idea good? For the record, this is probably the most relaxing theme I've done this year. And I think I need to go back to leaf patterns because they are easy and relaxing and almost always look amazing. But I do like to challenge myself sometimes, which is why I've ventured into water animals and I do like those ones as well. Anyway, next up is a really fun part of the process, which is to cut out my Dutch doors. Now, if you paid attention earlier, I recommended starting and ending the leaves more towards the center of the spread because it gives you the opportunity to create more Dutch doors later. I'm just lucky I had enough space to fit all of my spreads and uh, by the way this will make more sense later. I'm going to use my scissors and cut close to each leaf. In hindsight I should have cut even closer to the leaves but the amount of white space isn't that shocking and I'm still very happy with the end results. But if you wanted to do the same thing I recommend cutting maybe one millimeter away from the actual painting because that way you have more space for future Dutch doors and future cutouts that you'll be doing. After cutting it, it is now time to turn the page and create my monthly log. I placed my calendar down and started tracing out the horizontal lines. And then when I finished those horizontal lines, I realized that the monthly log would look pretty cute with only one horizontal line on the top. So I left it like that and started writing out my numbers. So there's no distinct boxes, they're separated by the numbers. By the way, isn't April such a satisfying month? The end of April is on a Sunday. And for those of us who write our weeks Monday to Sunday instead of Sunday to Saturday, this is very, very satisfying. Then I'm I'm moving on to my dark green calligraph pen and I'm just going to darken the top line for the header and I'm going to use a light green acrylograph to write Monday through to Sunday, just the initials on that same line. Now I know that was a mouthful but those are actual terms, I haven't made them up. Archer and Olive have amazing brush pens that they call calligraph pens because you know calligraphy and then acrylograph for acrylic paint in a paint pen. I don't think I really needed to explain that, it was pretty self-explanatory to be honest but anyway. Next up is the painting. So I'm laying down some washi tape first because I want solid borders around my calendar. But also, when you look at the video like this, it's almost like the washi tape was meant to stay there. It didn't, but it totally could have, and you totally can do the same thing. The cool thing about painting on this page is that on the left page, I'm actually using the cutout marks to know the placement of my leaves. Now it won't be a perfect matchup 100% of the time, but it definitely helps you get the right length for the leaves, and I also think it's a very fun exercise. that is done I move on to the right page. Something that I want to look out for is the placement of my future leaves and because I decided to make these dodge doors only after I'd finished my cover page the leaf placement is super important. I don't want them ending too far from the edge of the page so that when you flip the cover page you can't see the leaves on the next page but I also don't want them to be too long so that I can't see the future leaves on the pages after that. That's why I'm using a pencil to mark out where the tips of my leaves should end on that page and because there's a natural dip in the previous page between each of the leaves it's quite easy to place those leaves but I don't always follow this rule it is just a guideline <laughs> branches I decide I'm done and I remove the washi tape and I pencil out where I want my title to go. I then go over it with a pentel brush sign pen in the color green, the same one from earlier. And this is my favorite one of the colors by the way. It's such a vibrant beautiful green. Then I erase the pencil markings straight after and smudge my calligraphy because I'm an idiot and couldn't wait the extra 10 seconds it would have taken for the ink to dry. And then because I've stared at my page for far too long I decide four branches on the right page isn't enough and I add a cheeky fifth branch on the bottom.
I also flip to my cover page to see how everything is looking and decide it's pretty damn great so I move on to cutting around the leaves. Now even if it wasn't great I wouldn't have had a choice because it's already painted down. I'm not going to cut out a page of my journal again. <laughs> For aesthetic purposes I have decided to make my own life hell by not moving my journal while I'm cutting around the leaves. And while I am now super adept at holding scissors in extremely bizarre ways this is not a particularly useful skill to have so note to self the video is fine even if I move my journal. Can somebody remind me that in the future? It is a officially the next day and I am back and motivated to continue painting this month. Here's a better angle of my painting leaves on a pre-cut journal paper so you can see from the previous day where I cut out my leaves or like I cut out the edges and you can actually see where the placement is. Like an overhead shot doesn't really give you the same perspective. I usually pick a random leaf edge and start painting. Typically I take the apex part of the page so that I know where the stem should start but I don't always do that and I do occasionally flip the page to see where I started the previous branch on the other page and sometimes that helps with spacing. Now I know I say this about most of my bullet journal spreads but I think this theme is one of my all-time favorites. If you've seen my tier rank video I think I could easily place this bad boy in the god tier. I also totally love recreating my own themes like it's ridiculously fun to see how my technique has improved and how I can make themes that I already love even cooler. I mean look at how this page turns out like honestly slay. I've been hanging around youths recently. You girl anybody? No? I don't know. <laughs> and they were using terms like that unironically and I realized that I really no longer am a high school student. In fact, I'm not even a university student. I'm employed. Like, I have a job. I am working. I am earning money. I think I'm having a quarter life crisis. I'm also turning 25 this year. This is scary stuff, man. Anyway, I think I just got really sidetracked. So back to planning my life so I can make myself feel better and be more productive. I was looking at some of my friends' posts recently and saw them sticking in paper into their journals instead of drawing out habit trackers. And I thought that was a pretty smart idea. Like, I don't know if I've ever done that in my entire life. Like, work smarter, not harder, boys and girls. So I grabbed a notepad that I got from the March 2022 subscription box from Archer and Olive and took a piece of the dark green paper and used that as my habit tracker boxes. Now, if I'm not mistaken the March 2022 box wasn't very popular and they actually still have it in stock for a hot discounted price of $49 dues. And let me tell you that I love that box. I used the bag as a travel bag. When I went camping I stocked all of my goodies in it and they were so accessible and stayed in the car and it was perfect. I will say I wasn't the biggest fan of the quality of the die cut stickers but that was such a small part of the box and honestly they do make a cute addition to my long form journal which you can view over here. But everything else in this box was just honestly so amazing and I don't understand how they still have that box available like honestly i could almost buy a second one but that 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 is too much like that's too much i don't need two of them so i'm not gonna do that also while i am an archer and olive ambassador and affiliate i'm not paid to talk about that specific box so just know that this is coming from a very special place in my heart because i just really really love that box so if you want it go buy it link down in the description below and by the way you can get 10 percent off by using code vero10 cheeky self promo I know it's the second time I've done it in the video. I will stop doing that now. This is turning into a really chatty video. I'm obviously feeling myself today, so let's just keep going. I cut out my habit boxes and I have randomly chosen to track four habits. Yoga, swimming, and no sweets. This specifically applies to work because I literally cannot help myself. There's always Tim Tams, chocolate, jelly beans, or lollies at work. And I'm on my feet all day and I am too weak to resist them, okay? I cannot help myself. And then once you start, it's like an avalanche. Like you just, you just keep going. It's terrible. So I want to try and not eat any sweets. I'm always like, okay, just one, just one little one. And I, ugh, it, no, I should really stop doing that. I left the last habit blank because I'm not entirely sure what I want to track, but I will see later on. My next page is my master to-do list. I have realized over the month of March that my previous idea of breaking down this list by category of personal work and Archer and Olive things is not really working for me anymore. Because at the beginning of each week, I write down my tasks by order of what I remember on a different page. So so clearly I'm not using my master to-do list in the most efficient way. So this coming month I've trashed the categories idea and I'll be writing my to-dos list on this page and then tick them off as I go instead of writing them each week and then maybe I'll color code them by highlighting things but I'm pretty good at knowing which category things go in like I don't have that much going on in my life that I really need to categorize at this stage so we will see. The other reason I'm doing this is because I didn't plan enough space for my next spread so this is actually my default option but I do actually like it. So, you know, it worked out. So I cut out my border and this time I grew a brain because I changed the angle of my filming so that I could cut the paper better. And I also stopped filming it part way because we really don't need that many shots of me cutting paper. Work smarter, not harder. <laughs> Then with the same stunning green, I wrote master list. I didn't have room to write master to-do list, so you know, whatever. <music> 
And now friends, it is time for my weekly spreads. These weekly spreads are possibly the most boring weekly spreads I've ever done and yet they satisfy my soul. I divide a single page into three columns and two large rows. They'll constitute Monday to Friday plus weekend. And then here's the genius. I cut a small Dutch door within my leafy, bigger Dutch doors. I want to say it's a stroke of genius, but I can't take credit. I've definitely seen someone do something like this before. So then I color these little circles and write the initials of the week and day in acrylograph. down the washi tape and whip out my paintbrush and this is where I decided to semi copy my favorite weekly spread ever from September 2020 and put the leaves at the top. It did complicate things a little bit because the leaves on the previous page didn't curve around so I had to really play around with the spacing to make things work but I reckon it did a good job. Unfortunately, when I get to the right page, you can see that I'm clearly slacking off and the leaves end up looking like grass. <laughs> Luckily, when the Dutch doors are all to the right side, you can hardly see these particular ones. I also made another mistake here. I'll get back to that. I think it's because I was watching the Hunger Games. And yes, I am currently in my Hunger Games rewatching phase. It happens once a year like clockwork, okay? Don't judge me. The reason this was a mistake is because there wasn't supposed to be another Dutch door. That page was supposed to be like the last page and then the page after it is supposed to be the April review and then technically I would put my June cover page on the next page. But because I messed up, I decided to turn my review page into a two page spread. You may wonder how I messed up because it's not entirely evident and realistically I could have let it go, but I wanted the last page to have the leaves ending off the page to give it that kind of like never ending effect. But I successfully pull it off in the end. First though, a painting of the leaves on the next page. And as you can see, because I totally zoinked the leaves on the previous page, I had to use some creative thinking to make the leaves work on this side. I then did the branches on the next page making sure they finished off the page this time, like properly. I did some cheeky flips to see everything together. And honestly, I was getting super excited. I really wanted to finish this because honestly, it just looks so amazing put together. I think it's very reminiscent of my August 2022 theme where it's an entire painting and it covers like several Dutch doors, which you can see here, which coincidentally is my most famous not famous, why did I say famous? Is my most popular post on Instagram ever. But we're not quite finished, so bear with me, we are nearly there. I wrote April review, April on the top and then review on the bottom. I won't write the categories yet, but they hardly ever change. The reason I'm not writing them now is because I'd like to see if they will change in real time. Because I always film these videos before the month even starts, so sometimes spreads don't actually end up being useful, which happens quite a lot. I know, regrettable. I think I do a good job most of the time though. Now ladies and gentlemen, for the moment we've all been waiting for, let's take a look at the cover page. I mean, look at those pages. I'll say that when the pages are warped from the water, it almost looks better than when they are laying flat, which actually happens in the end because obviously my journal stays closed most of the time. But the effect is so cool. It feels like a jungle. I honestly love the feel of the pages. The Watercolor is great because it's not like sneering to the other page because it's good quality watercolors. I really do end up loving my weekly spreads. They're so minimal and yet popping with color and flair. Honestly, this whole theme has been absolutely amazing. I hope you've enjoyed setting up April with me. And if you are looking for some more inspiration, you can find my entire playlist of bullet journal spread setups right over here.